Hello, welcome to the Loney Show. I'm your host, Jarvey Loney, and in this episode, I have brought on regular, Safi. Hi, my name is Safi. Um, I hope you guys are doing well today. So, how is life? Life is a little bit of a struggle at this time, but I'm sorting through, you know, trying to find my way through this ocean. Yeah, you know, yeah. Right now, I'm just getting out of a storm, you know, I made it through the rain. But it's Absolutely. sprinkling here and there, and, you know, there's tornadoes here and there, but I'm okay. I got yes. this. Yeah, you got this. You can do anything. So, have you been up too much recently, besides what we just did a few minutes ago? Oh, yeah. Besides that, you know, I've been cooking and I've been writing poetry and I'll very slowly get myself back into making content again. Fantastic. How much time do you spend on the internet? We don't talk about that. I'm kidding. I spend... (laughs) If you count my phone being on the music during during work, I basically listen to music about seven to eight hours a day. Okay. Plus extra, so really 10 hours a day. You count my social media, really, actually, if you count Discord, I spend about maybe a total of an hour on Discord. You count my video game usage, it's basically about 24 hours a week at least. Oh, that that is a lot of internet time. Uh, What what social media platform do you spend the most time on? Uh, Discord. Okay. I had Fair to reinstall Instagram because I wasn't active for a while. And then I used okay. TikTok. Okay. Is that all? That's mainly all. Okay. Just things here Which... and there. But... Cool. Which game or reality show would you do best on? I think I'd be a good side character on Full House. Well, if that was back in the 90s. I like 90s sitcoms. Oh, yes. Everyone loves 90 sitcoms. I Those think were the I, vibes. Yeah. The way they dressed, Sorry. the way they did their hair, you know. Now it's just... Okay. I look at these newer shows, it's like, meh. Just doesn't have that same taste. Yes, I like the diversity that's happening, but if you can mix the diversity in with the 90s show, that'll be awesome. Okay. What's the most scandalous photo you have on your phone? Um, I just have a few body composition photos on my phone. That's all. Really? Is that it? Yeah. Okay, okay. Fair enough. And, um, anything you do with these photos in relation to what you're doing or whatever? Oh, I just put them on my, uh, fitness tracker. Or for say my met diary, I log my food because I'm trying to. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to have a healthier relationship with food. You know, have a good eye for it so that because I'm recovering from a binge eating disorder, and it's hard. I went from yeah. eating to anorexic tendencies to slowly integrating a healthy relationship with food. I'm a stress eater and an emotional eater. Okay, who is your favorite celebrity couple? Oh, sh- you mean that are currently together? Yes, currently what? split, whatever, any, cele- any celebrity couple. You know, I like Shawn Mendes and Camilla Kabili, I can't say it right. Oh, yes. Cute, and then they split up. Oh, yeah. But hey, you got to respect the wishes and just let them be doing whatever they want to do in their life. It's more like, all right. It's more like your aunt, your favorite aunt, just hears about that breakup, and you know you're really a little bit bummed out about. But then you realize, you know, it's probably best for them anyways. Yeah. What's the biggest mistake you've made? Goodness, I made a lot of mistakes in my life. For one, you know, I wish that I didn't take so much of a long break. I wish from content. I wish I never let. My emotions get the best of me. And I wish that I can't really turn back time, but you know, I wish that I could have, I wish I could have done better 
in general, you know, but then again, that's my perfectionism talking. You know, I have to take it as it is. It's like, you know, what it is what it is, you know, you've done what you've done, you know, you have time, time to do better. This is your chance to do it. If you screw up, you have another chance. You keep going despite, you know, failure. And the more you resist, the more it's likely to happen. Yeah. Every day is a second chance to try something again. Even if you fail multiple times, you always get the chance to try it again. And that's the important part. Which recent news story have you found most interesting? I was devastated that two, in one month, two of my, two of some of my favorite celebrities have died. You know, one of them being Bob Saget, the guy that plays Danny Turner in Full House, in Full House. And another meatloaf, I was dead on devastated. Yeah. I mean, 2020, I'm sorry, go on. You know, it's just, this year has taken a lot of people already. Yeah. 2022 has been off to a very interesting start, but not in a good way. Uh, and I felt that he I was tragic, but and it still is. Uh, rest in peace, Betty. Yeah. You'll always be a legend. I too. You know, don't remind me of that. But let's focus on the positive. Yeah. You know, you know who's still alive? Paul McCartney. You know who else is still alive? Ringo. Half of the Beatles are still alive. Either your glass is half full or half empty. You know, yeah. with that half, if, with the half full glass, you could also add whatever else you want in it. You know, if you have a half full glass of coffee, you could add creamer, you could add sugar, you could add whatever you want without it overflowing. I agree. Would you consider yourself to be an extrovert or an introvert? You know, I might seem like an extrovert, but honestly, I'm an introvert. I get yeah, so I'd say the same. Like, you know, I need time alone. I need to recharge. I need my time alone. You know, my time alone is the gym. My time alone, if it's not the gym, it's just on my computer by myself. Yeah. And that's perfectly fine. Some, sometimes I do it all the time. And yeah, whatever shit that goes on in my life. What do you want to do when you retire? When I retire, I want to continue writing poetry. I want to have all of my poetry published and I want to by the time I retire I want it to I want to go to Canada and I want to go to England. I want if I don't if I end up staying in the United States of America and I'm retired a retired person living off of my passive income, you know, I want to run an animal ranch. I want to run a fox I want to have some foxes to look after. I want to have, you know, adopted and you know deserted animals that I would pick up on the side of the road and just take care of them all. Mm-hmm. And then I want um, an exotic ranch. Oh, cool, cool. Uh, is there anywhere else specifically in said countries you do want to go to? You know, I always want to go to Japan. Although I only know very little Japanese, you know, I feel like I could bring an English friend that knows more Japanese than I do and, you know, perhaps we could go to places together and, you know, have a group of people so I don't be by myself. Because yeah. Japan may seem small, but it's really big. Yes. A lot of people and, you know, it's easy to get lost, it's easy to get kidnapped. So I'm not going to go up there by myself. Unless I'm on a mountain with cherry blossoms. Mm-hmm. Chicken tea. That sounds like a dream. Yeah. What's your most embarrassing memory? Geesh, I am pretty embarrassing, but what I remember particularly, excuse me, excuse my stutter, is that, that's a good question. One day, I went to school, actually several days I went to school, you know, I was a big kid growing up, that was embarrassing, you know, I would sit on a desk and the desk would be cutting into my stomach. And it was so 
it was so uncomfortable. Fast forward, you know, one day I wore, you know, one day I came on the bus. I was wearing khakis. These guys were saying, did you just touch your peers? Like, no, no, no. You know, I had to lie to them. I said, I sat on a red pen and, you know, I had to put my jacket around my, my waist so that no one else sees it. But I did, in fact, start my period. And, you know, those boys would make fun of me. It's like, shut up. You were on your period. Shut up. You know, it's like, these oh. guys bully me. Well, tease the hell out of me on the bus every single day. One day. I mean, one year, I had those boys do that. Until they graduated middle high, elementary school. That happened in elementary school. It's only like 12 years old. 11, 12 years old, you know. At the time, I didn't know much about my body, really. Because I grew up with my dad. Okay. Uh, what fashion trend would you start if you were an influential fashion icon? Red hoodies, jeans, red, red boots, red barrettes, red glasses, monochrome, you know, I would do monochrome. I wear okay. one I wear one color. Okay. Anything else on top of that? Um and then I'd like to redo the I like to bring back the fringe. Or perhaps a bit of a stray hair, you know, not over stimulating style, but you know, red's you know, red's a good color. And then cool. it represents power, dominance. Well, I'm not dominant, but I'm I'm equal. I'm more of a, red is a symbol of power and growth to me. Cool, cool. Very nice. How much? Yep. Sorry, go on. How much time do you think you spend on the internet? Hmm. It's, uh, uh, oh, man. I don't usually pay attention to how I spend on the internet. But I do know I do spend at least 10 to like 13 hours each day. I mean, that's a lot. And it's not just about social media. There's YouTube and there's um, other Bing Bangs and uh, this is game I play and it's uh, it's very very addictive. So yeah, it's, uh, I spend loads of time on the internet, especially during this podcast and uh, posting on social media and uh, do other stuff, bada boom, bada bing, and so on and so forth. What bullets have you recently dodged? What bullets have I recently dodged? That's a good question. I, I've been fortunate enough to dodge a lot of life. You know, I actually almost started to work for McDonald's one year. You know, I interviewed for the position, and I realized how much of a jackass. Well, he was more of a douchebag. Excuse my tongue, but he was more of a douchebag. He gave a douchebag buzz. He was bragging out his vacation and being in Miami while it was raining and. You know, I feel like he was looking for something in me, you know, but, okay. you know, I didn't, I called them and they're like, no, we got what we needed. You know, I asked, when can I call to see if I got the job? Call on this day. So I called on that day and uh, it's like, we got what we needed. You know, I started working retail and I realized after hearing everybody talk about working fast, you have to be very fast and You'd have, it's very stressful. You know, you, may, you might make a little bit more, but, you know, I think I dodged a bullet there, especially when the manager was a total douchebag. Oh, uh, okay. For that, yeah. Yeah. Have you ever stolen anything? Have I ever stolen anything? Two or three years old. You know what happened, right? Um, I accident. I think I picked up a thing of gum. I didn't, at the time, I didn't know how they call anywhere. I didn't know the effect of stealing, but I think I picked up some candy. My mom's like, where did you get that? I got it from the store. It's like, I didn't pay for that. It's like, you stole it. It's like, so she brought it back to them. I, I think she brought it back to them, and that's the only time I stole my life. Unless you count stealing my sister's shirts or hoodies, but she knows, she always goes like, hey, isn't that my shirt? It's like, yeah. It's the only, I couldn't find anything else to wear. Now she steals some of my old shit. Ah. 
How the table has flipped. Yep. <laughs> How the tide has flipped. <laughs> Who is your celebrity crush? Oh, shit. Oh, shit. You know, I had a little... It's really hard for me to develop a crush on a celebrity, but I always had a crush from on Steve from Full House. You know, that's the, that is, uh, shit, what's his name? My brain's going a million miles an hour. But I always had a crush on Steve. I had a slight crush on DJ. You know, classic, you know, I had girl crushes and boy crushes on celebrities. But currently... Currently, uh, I have a slight crush on your Ed Sheeran. I like redheads now. <laughs> okay. What's the biggest lie you've ever told without getting caught? I did my homework, but I left it at home. I'll bring it tomorrow. Realizing I forgot to do it. So I turned I around and I rushed through it. And I turned it in the next day. Okay, I was going to ask you how long did that last for? The teacher believed me, but maybe she didn't, but she probably took it. Like, it's due tomorrow. Okay. So, you got got away with a couple days? Maybe just one day? She just let it go completely. Really? It's due the next day. So, I rushed through it. I think it was, I think it was back when I was in, uh, Elementary school, they would give us a lot of homework. You know, we're already, we would have reading homework. We would have um, math homework. Sometimes we'd have science homework. Sometimes we would have history homework. I think okay. I did that in the third, fourth grade. You know, okay. Like, yeah. What's the most cringe song on your current playlist? Well, I have a couple songs from a. I have a couple songs from a couple video games. And I have some, like, I have a couple songs from Katamari, because it's one of the games that I like to play. And then I have, and then okay. sometimes I like to listen to a lot of jazz music. Oh, nice, nice. I listen to a variety of music, but I think, I don't know. Should someone in 2022 be embarrassed to have a little bit of Kelly Clarkson on their list? Should they be embarrassed to have a little Celine Dion on their list? Or maybe slightly crush on Michael Bublé, too? Because <laughs> yeah. I have Michael Bublé, too. I mean, Michael Bublé is... He's all right. It's, his music is really great. I like the jazz and the classic feel, you know? He does, you know? He's a really good singer. I was like, oh, man. Michael yeah, Bublé's voice is so perfect. Yeah, he's such a vibe. Yeah, he is. Do you have a toxic trait? Perfectionism. Ah, of course. We've everybody, all been there. Everybody knows, well, some people know that I could be a perfectionist, but lately I've been trying to get rid of that trait. It's like faith that does not have to be perfect. Do yeah. not go perfect because you'll never get this done. On my job, there's some nights where... I want to do such a good job because I did. Because one thing you should never tell a perfectionist to up their work, to do better. Like, what do you mean? You know, it's when you're not specific enough to tell them what they need to work on. You know, when we got back from we got back from Christmas break. You know, I was fortunate enough to have that Thursday, Friday, and then the Christmas Saturday off. And you know, when I come back on Sunday. I had to work on my running. You know, one of my coworkers told me that the boss told them that to tell me to up my work on running. I don't. I wasn't sure what they meant, but that was the worst thing I could hear all for to start the year off. And to this day, it still affects me. You know, it's like, what is she talking about? Do I need to line them up a lot better? Do I need to be more faster? Do I need to be? Do I need to take my time? That's the worst thing to tell a perfectionist. Oh yeah. So I'm nice where I couldn't even finish my job. Well, I was about half done and, you know, I couldn't just finish it. You know, I had a lot of, I had a cart full of go back, you know, stuff where it doesn't belong. And, you know, a lot of that. It's just, mm-hmm. that's my most toxic trait, perfectionism. Yeah. What is the best way to stay motivated and complete your goals? 
I believe you start with one thing at a time. Don't get yourself overwhelmed. Just I do this on my job. I do this while making videos and podcasts. Just focus on one thing at a time. I master that. Anytime I go to the gym, one five pounds at a time, you know. You know, if you feel ill, just do twelve, just do twelve. Do twelve reps. That's one rep. One rep at a time. I mean, one set at a time. One thing at a time. Breathe in, breathe out. Slowly but surely you will win the race. Yeah. Absolutely. Don't, don't think too far ahead. I had a thing for a while that I wanted to have things planned out. And usually when I plan things out, I often get disappointed and under motivated that, you know, they didn't go to plan. Cool, cool. When was the last time you cried? Oh, when was the last time I cried? It was actually last week, you know. I actually had a decent week. Yeah, I had a decent week. It was last week, you know, I was overwhelmed and with the person... For a person with anxiety, you know, thing, when things pile up, they keep piling up and you start to feel overwhelmed and you feel lost and you don't know what, else, what you want to do first. You know, you kind of have that breakdown and, you know, with someone, both depression and anxiety, you know, it's like, anxiety is like, I got to do this, I got to do this, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up, you got this. And then the person's like, eh, you don't need to do it, just rest. Put your warm blanket around you and just say, fuck it. I'm tired. Okay. What's your biggest fear? My biggest fear? You know, I have a lot of, you know, I am very fearless. You know, I'm not afraid of spiders. I'm not afraid of snakes. I'm not afraid of heights, but I'm afraid of failure. I'm afraid uh, of, yeah. you know, being dirty and not having a stable place to live, not being able to you know, afford a life better than I have currently. I'm afraid of not improving. Have you ever peed in the pool? When I was younger, yes. Yeah, it happened. Especially when you crawl out of the pool, it's super duper cold. Yeah. Have you ever caught dancing in front of a mirror? Hmm. Not really. Okay. What's the most flirtatious thing you've ever done? The most what? The most flirtatious thing you've ever done. Flirtatious? Yes. Ah, uh, shit. You know, I was shy growing up. You know, back then I wasn't brave enough to tell, tell this one fella I really liked him. So what I did was, yeah, he, he, and looking back at it, I think he really liked me too. You know, it was, huh? around, well, it was around before Christmas, you know, we would, he would try to ask me out or something. What was it? Did he ask me out? He would, you know, he would ask me out to be in a relationship with him. I was like, maybe later, <laughs> but I would always draw over his notebook because he would draw over mine. And when I got a little bit older, I was able to say, hey, I was able to form a proper relationships. Well, not really proper. You know, I had quite a few toxic ones. I would always call the individual handsome and I would always say, you know, you got beautiful eyes, you got a perfect hand, perfect smile, you know, and I couldn't, you know, I wasn't scandalous or anything, but, you know, I was more like simple cheesy shit. Okay. Who do you disagree with most? Who do I disagree with most? Yes. <sighs> you know, I feel like one of the, I feel like Risk 11, M, M and I, we disagree with each other. We butt heads all the time, but we've been, we've always been pretty close to each other. Mm -hmm. You know, we are two opposites. You know, I'm the steady, easy going, you know, one step at a time girl and He's always got big plans and he always, the one thing I do envy him for is that, you know, 
he always knows what's, what to do. He always knows what he wants to do at times. He's always got ideas popping. Meanwhile, <clears throat> I could only muster to to make two of them happen at a time because it's the only time I have. Okay, okay. But and he always wants to do more of a podcast thing. You know, I don't mind that. He always wants to do do a lot. And I'm more realistic, you know, just do one thing at a time and, you know, don't get old, don't put too much potatoes in the container. You won't be able to make a potato salad that way. Okay. You know what I mean by that? Yeah, I know what you mean. Don't over, don't put too much water in the bowl. Don't put too much pasta, you know, because metaphorically, you'll have overload. Yeah, it's just going to spill over. So what I do is one thing at a time and focus on maybe three things at a time. Yes, absolutely. What is your guilty pleasure? My guilty pleasure? Yes. Uh, You know, that's a good question. I got quite a bit of them, but you know, I like my guilty pleasure. I like cheesy music. Barry Manilow is a guilty pleasure. I like to listen to some of his music. Okay. And then I also like to put put ketchup in my macaroni sometimes. Okay. That's cool. That's cool. And a junk food. Junk food. Depends on, depends on what you define as a guilty pleasure. Okay. I mean, anything is a guilty pleasure. If you think people are just going to disagree with you with what you got, and if you still genuinely like it, that's cool. It's whatever, I guess. To be honest, I still think about my depression meals when I, I had while I was 300 pounds. Or, I guess I have to translate that into stone, don't I? I was... Yeah, whatever. It's whatever. I was like about 18, 20, about... 19 stone. Now I'm like 10 stone. Oh, huh? impressive. I, when I was like 19 stone, I would eat things like Pop Tarts on my ice cream and peanut butter on my waffles, chocolate chip pancakes, with, you know, anything really. Yeah, yeah. I would eat so much. Do you have any pets? Oh, yes. I got. One German Shepherd, and then I have Avery. You guys will see her on the Team Sketch podcast coming up. Oh, cool. Avery is a pit bull mix lab. And then we have a cat that likes to stay outside. His name is Bezos. I call him Bezos because he always likes to curl up on the doorstep like an Amazon package. Oh, okay. That, that's kind of clever. Yeah. Uh, oh, that's really creative. Sometimes I call him Mr. Bezos. It's like Mr. Bezos. Okay. <laughs> uh, which season do you prefer? Autumn or spring? Autumn, spring. Autumn, because spring brings out a lot of valeries, but so does autumn. But autumn is prettier because you get to experience temperate weather. It's not too warm. It's not too sunny. You know, it's in between. It depends oh, yeah. on where you live, too. But where I live, you know, it's still like kind of like a summerish, but it's kind of like it becomes semi Fahrenheit, becomes warm enough, but also cool enough to go out on your bike and enjoy the leaves, enjoy a bit of the breeze, you know. And then there's Thanksgiving there and Halloween. You know, I like that. Yeah. If you opened a business, what kind of business would it be? You know. That's a good question because I've had a multiple ideas. It's like, how could I finance this? But, you know, I was thinking, what would appeal to my generation? We seemingly like cottagecore stuff, but there's so much cottagecore going on. I was thinking, hey, why not start a fragrance, the fragrance, fragrance, fragrance business? You know, there's a store in my town. It's called the Sunshine Boutique. They sell, oh, they sell paint, furniture, and wax, and I buy wax from there. Recently, I found out that they're about to 
closed down because they are not reeling in enough money. Obviously, I knew that they were spending too much on furniture. It's like they could they could have just focused on fragrances because everybody loves fragrance. Because where I work, people like to seemingly buy things that smell good. You know, along with that, you know, I lost, you know, depending on the depending on the outlook of it, I also thought about I need to catch my breath. I'm sorry. It's a lot. It's really. It's fine. I thought about making a business tailored to short women, like myself. Include short men there. Because you'd have to, because when you go to the store, it's very hard. To, it's not easy to find clothes for petite women. The petite stuff. They look so generic, you know, it's like, wow, really? You yeah. know, I think about a lot, really, but that's mainly what it is for now. Mm-hmm. Cool, cool, impressive. What trends did you follow when you were younger? Well, I actually kind of did this before it was cool type of girl. You know, back when I was in sixth grade, I got a pair of Converse. And guess what happened the next year? What? Every girl in my grade was wearing Converse. Hey, yo. You're like a fucking trendsetter. I turned around, you know, one year I was wearing just a plaid jacket. Next year, plaid jacket. Oh my gosh. And then I started to wear thick rims. Thick rims and, you know, glasses in general. You go to okay. thick rims. Well, I start. I accidentally started, I guess, what my sister has to call the hipster trend. It's not really hipster, but it's nerdy, it's comfortable, it's, you know, not suspenders and, okay, maybe thick rims. That's the only thing. Okay. I wear whatever matches and whatever, you know, I'm kind of pulling at the time. Because growing up, I would wear mainly hoodies and, because I was so insecure, but I accidentally started the Converse trend. I believe I did that. In the flannel yep. trend. But then oh, you, you certainly did. Oh, you certainly did, that's for sure. Uh, that's all the time we have for this episode. All right, people. I hope you guys take care of yourselves. And yeah, I hope you guys take care and have fun. Yeah, I'd say the same. And until next time, stay tuned for more. This episode of The Lonely Show is brought to you by Matchmaker.fm. Matchmaker is a platform where users can search up and book in with podcasting shows to do ad swaps, content collaborations, and make guest appearances. Now, as someone who just started making a podcast and want to look for guests or do some form of content collaboration, this is the platform I highly suggest to any of those people. And if you do want to be in the next episode of The Lonely Show, all you got to do is go online to matchmaker.fm, search up The Yolone Show, send me a direct message, and yeah, just leave the rest to me. So what are you waiting for? Go online, make your very own guest profile today at matchmaker.fm. <laughs>